Hi everyone, this is Gleb Bakhmutov and today I want to show you how to visit multiple super domains in a single spec file and pass information from one domain to another. This issue 944 has got a lot of attention, lots of upvotes, lots of comments as you can see, both angry and frustrated and suggestions of other testing tools and so on. Now, at the end, this person, Alexander, for example, says, okay, here's a simple project for you to see the problem. It's right here. Thanks for that, Alexander. It's always nice to have a reproducible example. And I, I just want to point out that Chris is working on this uh, feature and Cypress will remove multi-domain limitation or single domain limit in the test. So that's in progress. I know it's painful for some people. So bear with me. But for now, let me just show a solution or a workaround solution. So let's take this code. I have, let's say, x1. I'm going to clone it, go into x1, open it in this code. Let's look at the package JSON, Cypress 8. It's pretty slow. So I'm going to just upgrade it. And I'm going to install dependencies. Okay, I don't have to use yarn, it's npm. And one thing I will do, I will install Prettier right away so that my code, when I show it, looks better. So I'm going to copy Prettier settings file here. And one thing I'll do just for the purpose of a demo, I'm going to set the print width to 60. So it's a little bit narrower than my regular code so that it's visible side by side. So the whole project is here. Let's look how we run. Okay, so we just open Cypress with environment variable config equals to dev. Okay, so it reads some variable. So let's look at the spec file. Okay, so we want to visit one domain in this test and one in the second domain in this test. And the person is trying to pass count right here. And it's trying to set parent value to share value to pass and then trying to see if it's passed to the second test. Okay, so this doesn't work. Okay, let's let's see how we're gonna fix it. We wanna run Cypress using Cypress open. Okay, we're gonna open Cypress right here while the test is visible side by side. So every time Cypress sees, you know, site visit and a domain doesn't recognize, it's not current domain, it reloads the browser, losing all memory in that process, right? Like whatever was loaded right here gets lost, initialized again. It's like loading the spec again from scratch. So the first thing we want to do is we don't need any of this crap. Well, any of this code, we're going to remove it. So right now we just want to visit this domain and then visit the second domain. So the one thing we want to do is we want to Tell Cypress in this test, I'm going to visit this particular domain. So here's what we're going to do. Right here, we're going to grab this domain and we're going to say, okay, the base URL for this test is going to be this particular value. And we're going to visit everything after that. Okay, so we're warning Cypress, hey, reload, set the base URL. So you don't have to reload once you are running inside the test and all of a sudden you see a site visit and you lose track of everything before. Okay, and the same thing here. So we're gonna remove uh, this URL and we'll say in this task, your base URL will be this value. And we do need, in this case, uh, the protocol as well. Okay, so notice it now resets, right? But it's a lot more controlled, I would wanna say. It only reloads the browser right before the task, doesn't do multiple reloads, okay. Um, we don't need any of this stuff, right? So now our only problem is to pass value that we get from this test somehow to the second test. So let's first look at the first test. Okay, what does it do? Well, it opens this online shop and then it shows a couple of items, I guess randomly, and then it actually iterates, okay, and it tracks something. So Let's make the test slightly better by freezing the clock. All right, so we don't see anything, uh, you know, change it. Okay, so what do we want to do? We probably want to grab the first item right here. So 
So let me just uh, zoom in, look at the first item uh, right here. And each item has a title. So chocolate, coconut bar. I mean, the selectors are not the best ones here, but it has a class title. So what I will do in this first test, I will get elements with class that ends with underscore title. And I'll get the first one. And then I'll have a title. So for now, let's just log it just to make sure we get the right title. Okay, so notice we grab uh, six elements that have better titles. Grab the first one and we logged, uh, oh, we logged the whole elements we need to invoke text jQuery method and then we get lunchbox which is the first element lunchbox so now let's say we want to store that lunchbox so later we will use it in the second test if a process is reset in the browser that means we cannot store any variables using a local variable like you know text for example no we can't and we cannot even store it inside let's say then title we cannot store it in uh, Cypress env because it will get reset again. So the only process that stays, you know, unchanged while the browser restarts is the plugin process. But the one that starts, the one that runs in Node and controls how all the settings get loaded and the browser starts. So this process runs in the plugin file right here. And right now there is a whole bunch of stuff, but there is a task. Okay, that's what we want to do. So we're going to set the value right here. Okay, so that value right now is undefined. But we'll say whenever the user wants to save a value, we'll pass it in and we'll say value equals that. And we do have to return something like a promise or null from the task. We cannot return undefined. And if you want to load, we'll just return value or null. So that if it's undefined, we'll return it. null and Cypress doesn't complain. Okay, so this is great. Uh, you can make it as complex as you want. You can add methods for clearing a value, storing multiple values, whatever. So for us, we just need to store past a single value. So right inside our task, when we got the title, we're gonna call site task, um, save, and we'll pass title. Okay, so now um, open this again. Okay, so save chocolate coconut bar, and now, it's stored in memory. And now let's concentrate on the second test. So we're gonna visit the site and we can call task and say load. And what will we do for now? Let's just print it. Site log. Okay, visiting the second domain. We got load task and we loaded chocolate on the bar. The value is stored by the first test that it got from the first domain. Well, uh, this seems like to be like another online store, has this input box. Okay, so let's maybe take that value, type it into this search. Okay, so that's a button with class search toggle. Okay, so we'll get, so this is title. We'll get a button with class and it's not at the end, so we'll use wildcard. Um, search toggle and we'll click on it. Let's see if this works. Okay, we clicked on that. We opened the search bar. Let's see. Sometimes I have to reopen the DevTools to get the connection. Input text 10, placeholder. Okay, so we need to end to get that element. So this is input, placeholder, search, and type title. Okay, so we're typing chocolate coconut bar, and we probably need to add enter special key. Perfect, typed, and zero results for chocolate coconut bar. That's fine. Uh, it goes to the search page, so let's just confirm this. Location path name, and uh, it should not include, uh, let's say equal slash search. Okay. We could confirm the search string as well. Perfect. Now let's run both tests together. First domain, we get an item, and then we type chocolate coconut bar. Perfect. So we visited a single domain, and we told Cypress, hey, in this test, we are about to visit this base URL. 
the main one. We grab whatever value we wanted and we invoke task to save the value in the plugin process where it will stay safe and sound while the browser visits the second domain in the second test where it loads a value from the plugin process and then uses it to forever continue the test. So this is what you do.